Hey everyone, you're Tesla Tom. Thanks for joining me today on my YouTube channel. We are reviewing the Hyundai Ionic 5 today and going for our first long drive. Uh, let's get started. Uh, I've got the car currently on, but if you were to just hop in the car, you'd have to press this EV start stop button. And uh, yeah, let's, um, let's get on the way. So to change the gear, it's the, uh, there's a little stalk down here. And uh, we flick it up to get it into drive like that. And the indicators are on the right, like that, right hand side. And uh, that's basically it, and away we go. So when you start the car for the first time, it uh, defaults to level three regen. You can see there on the screen, level three regen. So if you want to switch to iPedal, there are paddles here, these two paddles here, left and right. So the right one goes up, Sorry, wrong way around. Right one goes down, <laughs> and the left one goes to iPedal. So iPedal basically is uh, Hyundai's version of uh, strong regen braking or one pedal driving, whatever you want to call it, in different manufacturers. And uh, yeah, having driven it uh, over the last few hours uh, cumulatively, yesterday and today, I've got to say the, um, the iPedal in Hyundai is actually pretty strong. Um, I dare say even stronger than uh, Tesla Model 3. So you've really got to uh, put the foot down to get it going. And when you let go, like it really does drag, drag the car back. And you can feel the energy going back into the car there. I quite like this, uh, this blind spot wanted to hear. You can see when I turn right or indicate right, you see how you can see there's a camera that lights up. Uh, you can see what's on your right hand side. The same thing happens on the left as well as you see along this drive. It, uh, it does show up, which is useful, useful because, you know, we are in an SUV, it's a little bit higher off the ground. So, uh, you know, if you like monitoring things around you, then that's uh, it's a good feature. There's the left-hand side one. Keep way, where we go. And, uh, yeah, there's lots of, um, lots of indicators and uh, things to go through in both screens. So this is the drive instrument cluster screen and then this is the center screen infotainment screen right here in the middle. I'm hoping you guys can see both fairly clearly. I've set up the cameras so that you can see them. So when you merge right, that's quite handy actually, knowing where the lines are on the road. So currently I've got it on, um, you can see there on the screen, you can see the battery uh, what's happening with the battery uh, in terms of whether the energy is going out or back in depending whether you're uh, I guess driving accelerating or slowing down with regen braking and the energy from uh, You slowing down is going back into the battery It's quite a nice indicator and then you can see uh, because it's an all-wheel drive motor You can see the differentials there as I'm driving uh, how much energy is going to the front uh, versus going to the back of the car or the back wheels, I should say. And then down here, you can see um, uh, the, I guess, the energy efficiency, uh, how many kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Obviously, the more torque you put in, uh, the more energy and less efficient the car is. And the more you cruise, I guess, um, the better it is. I guess the car wants you to be down here, sort of a marker there, 20 kilowatt. Is it 20? No, actually that mark is probably where I am currently, at 18.9. 18.9 is about 6 um, kilometers per kilowatt hour. And that's kind of on par with Model 3, from my understanding. Okay, so, again, um, pretty harsh there, that uh, one pedal, I pedal. Could actually, there's a tiny bit of lag, I've got to say, with one pedal. Once I put the accelerator down, it takes a tiny fraction of a second before it gets going. So speedos right there, as you can see, uh, pretty clear there. And there's that uh, differential in um, the motors front and back. Bit of a uh, bit of kinetic energy going back into the car with regen braking. And then you can see the range there, 336 kilometers left on this battery. You can see it's 87% left on the center screen. Haven't charged the car yet since I took delivery yesterday from Hyundai. And of course, many thanks to Hyundai again for allowing us to test drive this vehicle. 
There's the odometer, 2,429 kilometers. Temperature 17 degrees down there. Uh, battery status says I pedal and auto hold is just putting the brake down hard at a traffic light. It should uh, light up green there. So Tesla Model 3 can't wave today, unfortunately. Okay, what is going on? Although being in an Ionic 5, it's, I guess it's quite distinctive styling, so they might recognize this car. There's a differential there in the motors. The rear is getting more at the moment. You can see the right, this bar here, uh, tells you whether the battery is being used or whether there's regen charging the battery up. It's quite a nice indicator. And this bar on the left is how fast you're going, I guess. You can change um, what, uh, what type of driving you want to do. So let's see, by that I mean, so you can press, you can go into sport mode, makes it all nice and red. I guess the steering's a bit tighter in sport. And then eco mode, I guess. Takes a little bit more torque to get up there. To the speed you need. Oh, collision warning, there it is. Got a test there. Inadvertently, of course. Uh, I do like just normal, actually. I'll just go back to normal. Eco is a little bit, bit draggy. And then if you want to go into snow mode, you hang on to the um, Hang on to the drive mode button here, it gets you into snow mode. That will go back to uh, normal mode for now. Uh, let's see what else I can show you. So, this button here toggles between the um, different menu options for the front screen, and it is starting to rain. Let's see whether the wipers come on automatically. I do have it on auto, I think. Let's have a look. And that's one thing about the um, left stalk here. It's being in, uh, impeded, my vision's being impeded by the steering wheel. I can't quite see what it is. I'll have to wait till I get to a stop. And by the way, we're doing a mix of urban and um, freeway driving today. And this has gone back to level one region. I could feel that just sort of cruised along there. So I'm going to put it back to iPad all again. So yep, I've got it on auto wipers. I think it went on, didn't it, just then. So uh, let's see. If I press this menu icon, so we've got, what have we got there? Okay, so you can flick between compass, the battery status, and you can flick this thing down here to go, um, sorry, this one, this one here up and down, so that's tire pressure, and back to battery, and then this one is attention level, yep, I think that this one did something else as well, I'll have to check. I guess that's for lane keeping, which comes on by default, which is quite frustrating. This is um, auto steer and lane keeping. I'll have to try auto steer on the freeway when I get onto it, but the lane keeping I'm finding quite frustrating, but that's not a fault of Hyundai. I just find lane, lane keeping uh, in general quite annoying, no matter what cars I've driven. Do you hear that? So there was a uh, voice notification for a red light camera. It's quite handy. I'm sure you can adjust the volume. So that's, that's the autopilot, auto steer. When that's available, it goes green. And you can put lane keeping on by just holding onto it like that, which I find quite annoying, so I've just turned it off. But it does come on by default when you start the car. So I might just turn lane, uh, auto steer for one second off while I go through the menu. So more information there. Um, for this trip, 1,000 kilometers, 18.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers driven for 25 minutes on this trip. Some more drive information for today's drive. So today's drive, I've done 26 kilometers already, driven for 50 minutes on the road already. Compass, yep, so there's, um, you can, it's an, the radar, I guess, is picking up, I think it's radar anyway, picking up um, cars around me, any obstructions, things like that. Let's merge right. You can do the half indicate and uh, it clicks or the indicator goes on for five, five clicks. Do our best to avoid this truck. Let's go around there. There we go. I did see a um, blind spot monitor on the side mirrors there. You can see the red hazard Indicator comes on as well on the mirrors, which is nice. 
You can activate cruise control, which is this button here. So when you do activate cruise control, the eye pedal goes off. Of course, it's not going to stop for a red light. So I just got to properly turn it off or just press the brake. And then it goes back to eye pedal. Whoops. Oh, here we go. Front wipers. Auto, low, high. Yeah, okay. There you go. And some sprays water. Put the cruise control back on. There you go. So the eye pedal goes off. I guess this thing here is for the um, for how intermittent you want it. So how did I do that again? I like that, okay. So that's just flicking up and down for the wiper setting. And you can also, of course, um, you can also adjust how closely you want to follow the car ahead. And of course, flick up and down with this one here to uh, set the speed. So this one, distance four, distance three, distance two, distance one. Let's go to, since we're in Sydney, now that we're at 70, you can flick up to 70. Just the long press goes up by 10. It doesn't, you can't sort of like a Tesla 3, um, Model 3, push a screen to match this, the posted speed sign. But I guess it's easy enough to roll up and down for the speed. And I uh, make no apologies for comparing to Tesla, by the way, of course. Uh, we are Tesla owners, so it's naturally something that we're going to do on this drive. Just compare it to a Tesla Model 3. Hope you guys don't mind. I mean, they are arguably the market leaders currently with electric vehicles, so I think it's fair to make those comparisons. So that's pretty much the drive console. And we'll do the auto steer thing on the highway. As you can see down here, there's a whole bunch of uh, other instruments. It's a mix of screen and buttons, which some people do like. Uh, unlike Tesla, which is just a center screen, very clean. So it's really up to you what you want to do. So what we're going to do is keep going on this road here under the underpass and uh, try to hit the uh, the freeway going west on the M2 motorway. That's Pacific Highway above us for those of you in Sydney. Let's focus a bit more on this center screen here. So you can see this is kind of like the main screen, like the main home, home screen by default. You've got some useful information here. Um, Guest is obviously what I'm on. I don't have uh, ownership of this car, so I've just left it on Guest, but you can customize your profile if needed. Got the temperature there, nice and big, 17 degrees Celsius. Then you've got the uh, battery indicator, currently at 87%, and uh, giving us a range of 333 kilometers, which I think is actually pretty good. I will do a mini range test, a real world range test when we get on the freeway. I can uh, sort of make an estimate um, I'll show you a bit later on what, there's a bit more information about the battery if you press the screen. It tells you how much range there is if you turn the aircon off, which is quite handy I suppose if you're running out of range. Time's nice and big there, and got a little bit of a map there that integrates with the rest of the screen. That's quite a nice looking feature there actually, I quite like that. You can have the whole map as well if you want, but this is kind of like a hybrid mix between the two if, um, if you just want to leave it on the default screen. If you want more information on the battery, might just turn cruise control off for a second. Oh no, we're still going. Let's see whether it stops actually before I do that. Like whether it follows the cars ahead of me coming up to it. Yep, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. How smooth is it? Not too bad, not too bad. And by the way, in general, I find it's a, a fairly smooth ride. Um, I guess because we're higher off the ground, the wheels are fairly big, as you might have seen in part one of my video. It's a comfortable ride. It's a comfortable ride. It's nice as you'd expect of an SUV. It's, it's well made. It really is quite a nice, well made car. Um, yeah, quality finishes all around. Hyundai have really have really stepped up their game with Ionic 5. Uh, having driven the first Ionic, or at least first or second Ionic in Australia, this is a huge step up, big game, game changer. So well done Hyundai um, for uh, stepping up your game and um, creating this car to and to add to the EV market in Australia. I'm not sure how to cancel cruise control yet from the from this steering wheel. If I press that. Okay, there you go. <laughs> just answer my question. You just turn it off like that. Um, so if I press the screen like that, 
give some more information about So that's nice. So there's a speed camera warning. Um, yeah, so this gives me more information about um, the battery. Just got to pay attention here. There is a red light speed camera ahead. So I can actually just roll through gently there. That's good. We're okay. Um, so yeah, if you are running, you know, really short on range, you can tell that tells you that without the aircon or without climate control, you've got an extra, what's that, 13 kilometers of range. So, you know, it doesn't really uh, detract that much from the range having the aircon on, which is good, which is good. Right, I want to be in the left lane because I want to enter the M2 motorway. And then you've got the radio there as well, which you can control from here and also from down here as well. You've got the tune. Um, you can turn it on, on and off like that, radio media on, off, and you can mute it like there as well, this button, or up and volume down like that, or mute it, and then you can swipe, can I swipe, no, I've got to go back to home, I'll press this one, go back to that home page, and you can swipe right like that, and it gives you more information for the rest of the menu, I won't go through all that today because I'm driving obviously. But just quickly, if you want the nav or the map, um, that's what you do there, if you want just the map. Um, if you want to play with the nav, then you can do all that, but uh, of course I won't do that right now because I'm driving. I'll go back to the radio. This is Sounds of Nature, which is quite interesting. Lively forest, calm ocean waves, rainy day, open air cafe, warm fireplace, snow, snowy village. Let's go rainy day. How appropriate. Let's do that. Ooh, better switch to the left. All right, let's do our range test. So, we've got, what are we now, 86%, 2,438 kilometers on the odometer. Not depressing, it's uh, rainy noises. So let's see how, f how much range we get at 100 kilometers an hour on the highway. Alright, let's just press home, so I'll go back to there. Okay, right, so we're on the highway now, let's get to 100 kph. Oh man, that rainy noise is <laughs> not much fun, it's raining anyway. Um, I'll right, let that bus in, and then let's press cruise control. And let's get to 100 kilometers an hour, there we go. Now, let's play a little bit with auto steer. Sorry, I'm gonna mute that rainy noise, it's just too much for me. Um, so auto steer, we press this button here, boom. So, green icon's on. Now, I don't trust auto steer in general, even in, in a Tesla. And I'm assuming this doesn't have auto lane change either, but uh, we will lane change once this truck gets past me. No, I might be in this lane actually. Let's go in the left lane, all right. So obviously I'll keep my hands on the wheel mostly, but let's just see what happens. It, yeah, it's following the road okay. Pretty good. Not bad actually. Keep handling the steering wheel. Okay, All right. this car nags too. Alright, I'm going to change lanes. Now you can't obviously, it's not going to lane change for you. It's not auto lane change like Tesla. But I guess once you get into the lane, flick it off. Right, see, see, see that it, the the auto steer goes off um, by itself. So you've actually got to put it back on. Is that going by itself? And if, I, if I turn it off, yeah, it doesn't automatically turn on. You've got to actually press it again. And it, it, there's no noise. There's no cue like in the Tesla that um, it's being indicated, like no dung dung or whatever chime. So uh, you've got to watch the screen. So I guess that's my feedback, uh, Hyundai. If anyone from Hyundai engineering is watching. I think it'd be nice to have some sort of noise, some sort of ding or chime to indicate that you are riding on uh, auto steer. Because uh, yeah, that can be dangerous if you're not sure if it's on or off. Let's uh, go on this lane here. So when I 
take my, when I change lanes, then, okay, well, auto steer goes back on automatically. All right, that's nice to know. Yeah, I thought I had to re-initiate uh, it, but I guess not, sorry. So I take all that back. Might go back in the middle lane there. What do you guys think of the blind spot when I'm shooting with a camera? You like that? I was going to show you that uh, with, there is a wireless Qi charging. So, just see if I can show you. There you go. So, that's what I wanted to show you. The outside air is cut off for a pleasant journey. Okay. So, when you've got it on this home screen here, um, or the menu screen, see that charging? So, it shows that the phone is charging there. It's in the, in the wireless charging pad, which is under the console, which I'll show you guys in a more detailed review uh, later on. But uh, yeah, just indicates that it's charging there, which is good. Nice visual cue. All right, bit of nag there. Not too bad, actually. Um, not too bad on the freeway. Nice smooth ride. I, I don't know whether it's because I'm higher off the ground. It does feel like a smoother ride sometimes than the Model 3. I know the Model 3 is known for a very uh, harsh ride, uh, but we did get just get new tyres on the 3, so I'm comparing with my old 18-inch. But then again, they say larger tyres are not as firm. But it feels pretty good so far. I mean, this road's not great, this model, uh, M2 uh, freeway or motorway. See, there's like, there's like corrections on the road all the way through. I've got to say, this auto steer is performing pretty well. Um, if I've got to compare it with uh, another brand like the MG uh, ZS EV, which had uh, MG Pilot, I wasn't too confident on. This one, I, you know, I'd say it would be um, probably second compared to the Tesla auto steer. So, not bad, Hyundai. Not bad at all. Obviously, it works really well when you're tracking the car ahead of you. And um, and you've got good lanes, which the freeway does on this occasion. What do you guys think so far? Let me know in the comments there. And there's the map there. Pretty smooth actually and um, I've got to say the touchscreen now that I've got some time to show you it's actually quite responsive um, have used other electric vehicles apart from Tesla just driven them and the touchscreen isn't always fantastic but this touchscreen is actually pretty good like almost as good as Tesla if not I don't know I have, I've only had it for a day but, but no complaints so far pretty happy if you want just the uh, map like I said before, you can have that. You can hide this audio, I guess. You can have the full screen map like that. I'm assuming you can uh, zoom in and out. Yes, you can, like that. So it doesn't use Google Maps like the Tesla does. Can you zoom in? Oh, you can, okay. Cool, that's cool. You can't spin it around though. You can use your fingers to pinch in and out. That's nice. Nice, okay. Uh, no, don't swipe. If I go map, oh, that's map. So, yep, so that's the nav. Look, some people like the um, fact that there are tactile buttons. Don't mind them actually. Press the home button to go back to this main screen. Um, you can adjust your climate from down here. So if I want it a bit colder, I can, like that. I can press climate, some more settings. A lot of settings, eh? A lot of settings. Look at this, activation on washer fluid, auto dehumidify, smart ventilation, lots of things to play with. You can adjust 
like that, or from the screen as well, if you want to tap the screen. Why must this truck go next to me? Yikes. Don't like it when they're so close. Um, yeah, sync between uh, passenger and driver, like that, on and off. AC on and off. There's three levels of auto, which is interesting. Medium, low, high, auto. I'm not quite sure what that one's about. I have to check that up. Outside temperature, 19 degrees. And if I press uh, this button here, then you can adjust. Ooh, see that truck there on the left, the B double. Um, So, better let this truck in. Okay. Cruise control back on. There you go, cruise control back on. Okay. Zip it up to 100. You can see the, uh, the battery indicator there. Look, heated steering wheel too. That's nice, It'd be nice on a cold day. Demister for front and back there as well. Recirculate if you want. Rear heating. Rear left, rear right. Nice. Front climate. Rear heating. Front heating. Fairly intuitive, I guess, in general. I have to work out how to put the um, seat seat ventilation and um, it's not smart ventilation at the moment. Let's turn it off. Let's see what happens, whether you can... No, okay. That one I'll have to work out how to put the uh, seat heating on for you. Right, we're coming up to our exit pretty soon. We'll have to uh, work out the range test to uh, work out after this video what uh, what the real world range test is like. Given that we've got um, two points, driving at 100 kilometers an hour, just minus the uh, start and end battery percentage and minus the odometer readings as well. All right, here's the exit here. So I might just take cruise off. And defaults back to I pedal. Auto uh, steer is still on, so let's turn it off. Again, it'd be nice to have a um, audio cue, as I said before. All right, we'll slide back down to 60 kilometers an hour. Alrighty guys, well that's the freeway test. I'm just going to show you once I get into the car park at work, um, the parking. Yeah, there's some nifty things you can do with the parking uh, cameras. So you can turn them on just while you're driving too, like that. Press the button to display the camera view or press and hold to activate, oh, what was that? Press and hold to activate the parking assist. Yeah. So there you go, you can have the cameras on like that at all times, which is good. Oh, no you can't, sorry. What if I press it again? Might be a, a transient thing? No? Okay. That's nice, that's the uh, rear camera. And then, can you 
cycle between them like no nope, you've got to press the screen so okay top down view okay so it can be nice if you have buttons at Hyundai it's good to be able to cycle through with that button right if you've got them you might as well use them it's quite nifty something I wish uh, probably Tesla had some sort of uh, top down view like that don't know some people say it's unnecessary but it's a nice, nice thing to have, nice thing to have. Alright, I'll see you guys in the car park shortly. Alright, here we are inside the basement car park. One thing you notice is that there's a blue ambience around me there. Don't mind that. All right, let's find a parking spot here to park. Show you what it looks like with a camera system. There you go, so flick down to reverse. All right, and all the cameras light up and sensors and all those things. Look at that. What do you reckon? The top down view, pretty handy. And you probably just hear, I'll just wind the windows down. You can probably just faintly hear the, um, the external audio warning. Very faint pedestrian warning system, I guess, externally. In reverse, you can hear that very faint ding. There must be an external speaker somewhere. There we go. That should suffice. All right, guys, well, that's it. That's it for me. That's the Hyundai Ionic 5, and there is a brake you have to pull as well when you're on brake. Um, so, yeah, that's the um, Hyundai Ionic 5 uh, review for the, today. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, that's not the car flashing. There's a faulty um, fluorescent light outside that's flashing. So, yeah, leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and comment, of course. And, uh, yeah, we'll do some more vlogs later on, but that's the driving one. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you at the next one. Happy charging.